measure of reasonable commands. <laughs> this reading is more prepared. Pardon me. We're considering the minutes from the last meeting. Somebody so makes a motion to accept them as presented. <coughs> if anybody is in favor of that. I move to accept the minutes. I second. Chad made the motion to approve them. One will second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Monthly financial report. Uh, so you got kind of a summary there, but I'll go to the detail. Um, in terms of income, uh, grant income for e community funds in the Kansas Center for Entrepreneurship, $1,092.90. Um, this was us using our community funds for the, um, I believe this was the Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge. Um, the North Central Kansas uh, Regional Planning Commission, $1,000. This was, um, I applied to them for funding for the Ice House, uh, Think Like an Entrepreneurship class. So that was to support that. Um, interest income from loans, um, one for 13.03 and another for 2.34. Um, interest income from our RBAG loans, one for 5.96, one for 52, 58, 52, 49, 68.09, 97.40, 77.94, 5.12, and 51.96. Um, interest income off of Startup Kansas loans, one for 86.23, 41.72, and other interest income off of our accounts, one dollar thirty-five cents, thirty-two cents, twenty-one thirty, forty-two cents, forty-six cents, one seventeen sixty-two, and fifty-four sixty-six, um, and then loan processing fees. Uh, we have three for twenty-five dollars each. Um, miscellaneous income this is actually in the debit column um, for four hundred thirty-six twenty-seven. And if you remember last month, I had a reimbursement because when I went to deposit in, in the bank, they deposited it back into economic development. So this is trying again um, on that reimbursement. We've got an over/under of six forty-one. Um, so total income three thousand twenty-two dollars eighty-one cents. Um, expenses uh, tax prep Inc for two fifty. Um, Schwab Eaton for three thousand three hundred forty-two dollars. Uh, this is for the their work on the healthy living master plan. I believe we will have one more um, expense on that. Um, e community funds, USD 298, 9290. This was to reimburse the school for lunches during the youth entrepreneurship challenge because we needed to cover the lunches for the Sullivan kids and the judges and the, um, yeah, those two things. Um, and then we've got our uh, YEC prize winners, Cassandra Alshire for 250, Elizabeth Husky for 250, Andrea Hover for 300. Tegan Walter for 25, Delaney Harold for 25, Bailey Evans 25, Kylie Graymeyer 25, and Aubrey Donnelly 100. Um, and this is they the teams split the prize money, so that's why there's kind of different amounts there. Um, Best for Community Center, uh, $50. We rented um, that for the Healthy Living Master Plan public presentation um, last week. Um, then we've got interest expenses off of three loans, 9934, 8622, 4213. Um, advertising, um, the Wakanda Trader, we had two there for our alumni mailing, one for 
250 and one for 64 or 65. Um, when the Lincoln alumni sends out a newsletter, they've been able to put us, let us put an insert into that, and so this was our printing for that insert. Um, the Lincoln Sentinel Republican, an ad for our election, 2750, and the Finch Theater, $75 for three months of having a slide and that comes before all the movies. Office supplies, um, to me, uh, for $179.88, this is our annual um, web hosting domain fee that we've got. Um, and then we've got two to, to fill for office supplies, $177.29, another for $22.85. Um, Eagle Communications for internet, for $65, or excuse me, phone. Um, our insurance, bond insurance for Farmers Alliance, 920. Um, and then we've got payroll, um, QuickBooks uh, direct deposit fee of 350. Kelly Larson, 4863 33, and Chris Heinze, 873 50. Uh, FICA expense for Kelly Larson, uh, 276 73, and Chris Heinze, 5106. Medicare expense for Kelly Larson, 6472, and Chris Heinze, 1194. Um, program dues to the Kansas Economic Development Alliance for $300. Um, that's our annual membership. And the uh, Ice House class uh, to me for $130.20. Um, this was for some food for one of the classes. Um, and then the last thing, reimbursement to me um, for attending a creative conference for $174.84. Questions? Thoughts? No questions, no thoughts. We'll follow that country to audit and move Thank on. You. Marketing coordinator's report. Well, we don't have anything in your agenda, but basically that just kind of all rolls up together into the my first thing on my project update. Um, which is the countywide real estate open house. This has pretty much been the majority of what uh, Chris has been working on. Um, so just a reminder uh, of the event. Um, the idea with this is to try and get, create an event and create some buzz to get some, hopefully some houses sold. There's been a number of houses that have been sitting on the market for a long time. So the idea is if maybe... We've got several open houses going at the same time. We can pull some people into town to actually look at the houses, um, doing a lot of marketing and advertising for it. Um, so that's that's kind of the idea. Um, this week, last week we were trying to finalize um, the houses, and this week we're starting to promote it. Um, we've got 10 listings as part of the event. Um, one of the listings is the, the house across from the hospital, and then another one is the free land lots here, which I figured might as well just throw that in. Um, and then we need to get added just the free commercial lots as well um, to it, because I figured why not just put that into the mix. Um, most of the houses are in Lincoln. Photoshop? Uh, that first one? Yeah. You said Photoshop or? Yes, yes. Oh, is. she's selling it? Yeah, she's interested in selling it. Um, so most of them are here in Lincoln, but we do have one Lucas property and one Wilson property. Um, I'm, I would hope that we can get a couple more just because it's more likely for people to go and, and look at them. Um, the reason that we open it up a little beyond the county lines, um, one is to, to create more buzz um, for the event if, if we can kind of get more listings. Um, but another thought is in order to really have a good, I mean, one, one problem that I feel like we have is the houses that are on the market, you don't have a lot of variety of options. So if we can kind of expand our territory a little bit, maybe we can show some more options in this area and, you know, somebody from Lucas can still come and work at U.S. Tower, so to speak, if that's where they find a, a, the house that they like, um, or vice versa, for that matter. Um, you know, Lucas, uh, over 
there. If, if houses sell, you know, that's good for the school district. So, um, yeah, we don't have any Wilson Lake properties right now. I'm, I'm still kind of hopeful that maybe there'll be some people jump on, but we'll see that. So that's where we're starting with. Um, right now, uh, this week, Chris and I are, um, we've been working on getting, we've got a web page set up. Um, we've been trying to get a Facebook event page set up. Um, so that's taken just getting new pictures, getting the text written, confirming with the realtors. Um, there is a $50 per property fee, so working on getting those. Um, we do want to do a lot of Facebook advertising with this, which is kind of a whole new animal for both Chris and I, so we've been trying to figure that out. How do you figure out who your target market is and how do you do that? Um, so we're, we're still working on that, but um, anyway, things are moving along. Um, I feel for the first time that we've done this, I think I, I feel pretty good about what we've got so far. How come you've only got 10? I assume you'd have all of them. Well, to me it is $50 fee. Which is relatively well, free. It, yeah. yeah. Considering I mean, the it, amount of advertising that they are getting. Yeah. Um, one realtor who's got two listings in town, um, her son is getting married that day, so she's not able to, to do it, and she says that she asked some of the other realtors and, and nobody was able to, to commit. So that took um, two places out. Um, you know, I kind of wondered with the Wilson Lake properties if they just feel like they know who their sure. people are and so therefore this isn't really for them. Um, there's another uh, realtor who's got two houses here in town and I talk to him and I haven't been able to get much response. I'm going to try again because I think those are would fit very well with this. I mean, I, I kind of agree. I don't know, I don't understand why people wouldn't want to do this. I mean, a $50 seems like a pretty very fair price for what we're trying to do. Um, and hopefully the, the promotion and the exposure sure. they're going to get from it. So I don't know. It's been just kind of interesting um, you know, one realtor who, who is working with us, she just seemed to jump right on board. I mean, I, I hardly even had to explain anything, and she was just like, oh, yes. <laughs> and so that was great, and, and that's kind of a new relationship that I, you know, I've never met her before and really knew that um, um, what she does, and so I kind of felt like that's a good, a good relationship there. Um, there were, there are actually several that, um, when I called about it, they're now under contract. So it does seem like there are some houses that have been moving. This is the time of the year that it will. School's getting out. People are looking forward. They want to get moving. Yeah, yeah. Over this summer before school starts again. Yeah. I mean, in some cases. That's yeah. big. Do those include for sale by owner or just realtors? Um, just realtors. Yeah. Um, I'd have to go back to my long list. Because the for sale by owners, they you might have to contact them because they might not even know about this. Yes, and I've been yeah. trying to. Um, no, not your yeah, fault. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. Because like Cromwell's house down here, Jay's, it's rented to the dentist now. Yes. But I think it's still for sale unless well, he's buying it. No, the way I understand that is when they decided to rent it, they kind of had an agreement that they weren't going to try and gotcha. sell it for at least a year. So I think that's... Well, they still want to sell it. I think it's technically kind of off the market house. for yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. ranch style. Is, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on the outside of town. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, you know, they're they're kind of in a little bit of a deal there where um, they're not sure going to do that. Um, let's see. But they would be invited in if. Oh yeah. I mean, they could put it on here if they knew about it. Yes, if they hadn't come up with an agreement with. But the other, I mean, there's there's yeah. others that seems like you sit for sale by owner. And I yes. thought your son was taking the free house. Wasn't that what I understood? <laughs> nope. It wouldn't be. I don't know. I thought Dayton and Dayton's, they've got their own house. Shale, no. I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's nope. all we need is a project. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good house. Yeah. It is a. It'd yeah. be a nice house. It would yeah. be. Shailen's no. eyes really got big. No, oh, you're gone. <laughs> Maybe I need to talk to her. I have to talk to Shailen. But... We, we, we were, I, 
that when we were at the leadership dinner. We were talking. But I think oh. he was at the other end. Were yeah. You? No, yeah. I didn't hear that. No. Well, the free things are Because we looked at the yeah. pictures, and she's like, and it is, it's gorgeous on the inside. Yeah. And it, it just, is a neat house. I mean, house. yeah. Yeah. It's like, wow. Well, I investigated the price for moving and the price for a full basement. About $50,000. Yeah. Yeah. For both. The basement and Basement's yeah. 26000 Moving is in the low And then that depends on how many miles you're going. Yeah. But I think, you know, there's a few options there that aren't... That, I mean, Not to mention the 100000 to yeah. remodel. I mean, or it's going to need... Septic tank, <laughs> water, <laughs> paint, electricity. Or, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. There, there's it's going to take a three. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it is an amazing a, house. Yes, it, it is. is. It's it's worth something it's solid. Once it was all done, I think. Mm -hmm. so, um, anyway, I, Deb, uh, with Land Home Title... They do have a couple listings. The uh, there is one she said it's under contract, which we she intended to have a part of this, and then a couple days later she called and said it looks like it's under contract. And so it, there there are a few things. It's like okay, well maybe things are finally moving a little bit here. But you're lighting a fire under them, uh, and they're switch. saying yeah, let's get this thing done. <laughs> yeah, which is fine with me. I mean yeah. That's great. If half of these are sold before we even get to the open house, I kind of feel like that's that's great. Um, Problem solved. <laughs> yes. So maybe we need to do it more often. Um, so yeah, I feel good about it. I would like to have. I mean, there are some houses that well, are I on the market that, that aren't on do it. More of a community, regional effort on yeah. Yeah. highlighting. And so and hopefully, you know, if, if we do this one and it seems to have worked, then maybe more people will start to jump on board. Um, I do. I did have one comment from a for sale by owner that they just think it's going to be nobody but people being nosy <laughs> walking in. It's like, well, well, you got that attitude. You can't combat it. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, you know, I can. And see you got that. the nosy one that comes in and says, "Wow, that's really beautiful," and tells their neighbor, and the neighbor buys it. So. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> so you know, there's there's a little bit of that, but um, anyway, that's that's where we're at. So. A month out from the event, um, as part of it, um, there's also going to be an employers meet and greet at the Lincoln Art Center that day. So I'm hoping that um, we can also really start getting the word out about jobs that are available. And um, I haven't been concentrating quite as much on that, just to, so that we can get this up and going. But um, you know, we're going to have to start focusing on that more. But um, I did notice there was a Lucas and. But not very many Sylvan, or they're not very many homes yeah, for sale. There's like five houses over there, but I don't know what. There's no one over here. You know, and I know there's Nick's a house is sale. Nick Ringer's house is. He's got it listed. Um, so they have it through um, that row letter in. And also, I talked to him. Nick? Well, I know I talked to Kenny Weitler because Kenny's got it listed. Right. And he said, well, my contract only goes up to June 1st. So, but it's tied to it for another six months anyhow. <laughs> yeah, so it's just kind of like, well, I don't want to lock into an event that's after my contract in, so mm. that one's out. Um, there's another one that I tried to contact the owner and haven't got any feedback. Um, then there was another house that I saw next that classified, and but it sounds like, you know, there's two houses. One of which the owner hasn't called me back, and another of which I guess is under contract, or there's there's something in the works there. So, um, yeah, I I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if you know that Heidi, that Heidi house over there that's up for back taxes, and I don't know how they how you do those. Yeah. Um, it, it's I mean they wanted forty five thousand at one time. It was a really nice. It's a little house and it's got a big work. Shed, garage, whatever. Um, I can't even think of somebody others that are yeah. Well, if you think of anybody, I mean, I, the ones that I've known about, I've tried to reach out to. So that's that's where we're at. So, but if you know of anybody else, I mean, we can still add to it. Just because we're starting to do marketing doesn't mean that somebody can't jump on. I mean, I, I kind of hope that. 
it probably won't happen this year, but again, if, if it looks like this is successful, people who are just sitting on houses because it's easier to not do anything than to try and market it will say, hey, here's an opportunity for us that kind of helps with some of that marketing that they don't have the time to do. Um, so we'll see with that. But that's been um, a big focus of mine and, and definitely Chris's here the last um, couple weeks to get that going. Um, the next thing here, uh, I think I brought this up in the last meeting, the OCCK uh, bike sharing program. I um, can't remember what I showed you last time, but... Um, Did you find out more information on what we have to submit? Or? So, um, this is what the bike racks look like in, in Wichita. Um, let's see. So, the deal is that OCCK has funding from Blue Cross Blue Shield to contract with Zagster, who's this nationwide bike sharing company, to bring in the bike racks, the bikes, and the whole mobile app program. So that here in Lincoln, there's going to be five bikes. Um, and you know, if you want to go on a bike ride, you get on your app, you pay for it, um, they give you a code, you go to the bike, you put in your code, and got the bike, and, and you can use it. Um, it's either a per hour, per, per hour, per month, day. or per day, and, and, or like an annual membership fee. But if you're a member, then you can basically go anywhere. You can go to Wichita, get a, run a bike, Kansas City. I mean, you're, all, you're kind of connected to this nationwide network of, of bike sharing. Um, so the thing is here, the only requirement here is that we needed to pick a location. Um, and we need to have a concrete pad. Um, so I looked at a couple different um, locations um, and approached the county commission, or CCK and I approached the county commission about putting it here on the courthouse square. That seemed to be the best spot. Um, they did approve putting it somewhere on the courthouse square, although we didn't necessarily have the exact location down. Um, I'm trying to narrow that down right now um, so that we can come back to the commission and say, okay, this is exactly where we would like it to get that approval. Um, OCCK did apply for a web fund um, grant to do the concrete pad, and they, we did get funding for that, so um, that the county doesn't have to pay for it, we don't have to pay for it, I mean, it's, it's going to be a grant to get that um, pad. Basically, as soon as um, we get a location, I think we need to pad down, and, and they would like to have the bike racks up and going by June 1st. I think I'll probably be pushing it, but that's, that's the idea anyway. Um, so that's that's what's going on there. I've just, just been trying to kind of facilitate between those CK and figuring out the location and getting the approvals that they need for that. Um, any questions on that? Will the pad include a light above it to deter vandalism at night? Well, I'm kind of hoping where we put it, there's just going to be a street light close yeah, enough anyway. South east corner, that's pretty open. It's yeah, and there's a light. John Paul and I went around and we kind of took um, cones and sort of placed it out there. Um, I think we did five different locations and, and I took some pictures. Um, over there just seems... Uh, while there's plenty of space, it just seems too, like, a, like you're already kind of past the downtown. And, and actually there's, you know, you've got a really great view of the, the courthouse coming from that direction, and so then you kind of put a bike rack in front of it. I just didn't, I just didn't like that spot too much. Um, over here, kind of around the corner, um, we did another one, one on the, on the, west side of the sidewalk and another one on the east side and and that to me that seems to be the best spot um, I asked um, sent it to the city to get Jess Meyer's um, opinion on in terms of what side of the sidewalk if there's any utility lines or anything that we've got to deal with so trying to get an answer on that and then once I'll you know take all the options to the commission and they can kind of decide on the final one but um, we're trying to figure that out anyway. Um, 
Um, let's see, the Healthy Living Master Plan, um, that is pretty much come to a conclusion now. Um, over the last year and a half through the strategic doing process, there's been a committee that's um, wanted to put together this master plan. Uh, there's eight, ten different projects in there. Um, and so last week, the Schwab Eaton came down and did a public presentation of it. Um, here's the final master plan.
point. But in terms of the committee's work, you know, this is kind of a close out the presentation that we had last week of, of what their their focus was. Um, with the idea that now anybody who's passionate about any one of these particular projects has what they need to take it and then move it on. Um, so uh, a lot of this with the trails projects, uh, because of Schwab Eaton, they, they work with a lot of communities on trails and sidewalks. So they wrote it, those sections specifically in mind, knowing what grants we need to apply for to get um, to get that process going. So I feel like we've got good information, good cost estimates um, to, to keep us moving along here. Um, so that's that update. Um, another thing that's about to be wrapping up here is the Historic Preservation Fund project. Um, we've had a consultant who's been doing the surveys of downtown Lincoln, downtown Sylvan, and the city park here, and then also writing a National Register nomination for the old high school here in town. Um, on Saturday, the nomination for the high school, that, that's been finished, but now it's the approval process. So on Saturday, it went in front of the Kansas Historic Sites Review Board, and they approved the nomination. Um, so now the building is officially on the Kansas Historic Register, um, and it's been forwarded on to the federal level for consideration at the National Register um, level. So that, that kind of um, is moving along and getting close. Um, so as of now, the building could qualify for any state level historic grants and tax credits. Um, once it's approved at the federal level, then it, it can qualify for federal level historic grants and tax credits. Um, the survey work, um, the, we finally kind of got information back from the Kansas Historical Society on some of the buildings that were a little bit questionable, whether they would be contributing or non-contributing to historic status. So now we've got decisions on that. Um, the consultant can put together the final reports on that, and there will be a public meeting um, on those surveys coming up here probably not May, but we're looking at June. So we'll need to have Lynn Sylvan and Lincoln to, to say this is what the findings are. This is, you know, with every property owner, you know, this is kind of how your property was considered, and this is what it does mean, this is what it doesn't mean. How do we want to move on um, and actually designate the, the districts or not? So we're kind of at that, that point, but, but we're getting very close to the end of that project. Um, any questions on that one? Um, we've already talked about the free house a little bit, um, but I've just been, I guess I've, I've been the one who's kind of been a center for questions on it. We put some um, posts out on Facebook and it just went crazy. Um, the, the rest of that day was just like feeling questions of um, people um, who are interested in the house. Um, there's been a few people that have gone through the house. Um, some locals have been interested. Um, there's been some interest from non-locals. Um, only one non-local has gone through the house, and I think she walked in and was like, well, maybe this is... Moving this house 100 miles is a big project. <laughs> and I kind of miles? Like, yeah. Yeah, 100 miles. Um, <laughs> You got <laughs> So I know, I, I kind of felt like, surely there's a big house somewhere between here and where you are that would be easier <laughs> to move, or even where in the in our own county. Um, so there's just been lots of questions. Um, there's been a few people that have popped up that I think, man, that would be really, really, really awesome um, if, they, if they could do that. But I'm not sure um, where things are we trying to. Play cool, not pressure too much, but really wanting to pressure um, to, to see where they're at. Um, but uh, the, from what I understand, you know, there's not necessarily the, the wrecking ball isn't coming tomorrow. Um, but you know, there's sort of a recognition that if someone does want to do it, it's going to take time. You know, to if they've got to buy a piece of property or whatever, or to, uh, whether they have something or not, that's got to be figured out. You got to build a foundation. You got to schedule the mover. I mean, there's so there's just a, a process there, 
And so the idea is let's let's move on this, try and get somebody connected and, and get a process in place so that we know that this is moving along as opposed to just waiting. And then finally, somebody says, no, it's it's the waiting time is over. And then we've got people up in arms about how, oh, if they only would have known or... Um, and it's too late, you know, at that time. So we're just trying to get um, somebody interested so that we can start the process of getting the plan in place. Um, but again, I guess I've kind of been the, the center for questions on that, although I'm fine. Like I'm just answering questions and letting people in the house. I've got approval to show people the house. Um, but anything beyond that, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of moving on. Um, let's see. Any questions on that? Do Hanson still own it? No. Mm-hmm. Who owns it? Yeah. Who owns the hospital? The, the oh, hospital, that's the hospital. The hospital, the hospital they, foundation. That's right. It's, it's, it's not the hospital, it's the that's hospital right. foundation. Um, that's purchased it. Um, so leadership, Lincoln County, this is another thing that's wrapped up here this past month. Um, we had graduation. Um, we did a little differently than before. The past few months of leadership was a real struggle with all the the weather and rescheduling of you know ball games and all kinds of stuff and it just sort of it was kind of hard I feel like the last few months to get everybody um, there at the different leadership things and graduation was no different and we had it set and then again there was weather and ball games were rescheduled and the, you know. Some of the kids like softball the kids. Games and the, yeah, I mean, it really impacted the kids. Um, a couple of kids were in California for the journalism conference, and, and so there was just a lot of things that kind of came up. So for graduation this year, instead of having um, uh, it at the Finch and then the presentation, the projects, no, no project really unfolded, so we just um, kept it a little bit more informal and we went to Flyboy, and, and um, the people who could make it, we just had kind of a... Uh, meeting beforehand to talk about the, the overall graduation program of the year and, and thoughts on that. Um, and then we had dinner at Flyway, which I thought was actually kind of a fun thing to do. So, um, but the, the leadership year has um, ended, so a couple months from now we'll be up for doing it again this next year. Um, and then I guess if, on the Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge, if you hadn't seen the paper today, um, the winners of our local competition went to the state competition last week, and they did really well. Um, there were several different categories, but it was Libby Husky and uh, Cassie Alshire uh, one oh, here um, with uh, Alshire Farms, which is kind of a hydroponics business that they had, and they got third place did they in the really? division and won $1,000. So, <laughs> um, and then there was another $500 Prize in there too, but I don't remember what that was for now. But it's on the front page of the paper. Um, they were both good. Yeah, they did really good, and, and I hope that they would do well at state. And they did so. Um, so that's kind of wrapped up, I guess, for for that year or for the youth entrepreneurship of the year. Um, business updates. Um, U.S. Towers. They will be going to back to the city council meeting uh, on Monday uh, regarding the industrial revenue bonds, um, and it seems like everything is getting in order for that. Um, Doug McKinney uh, has been working on putting together a cost benefit analysis um, in terms of the benefits of this expect- expansion project compared to the cost of um, property tax abatements. Um, and so that now, that analysis, before it can go to the city and be a part of this discussion, it has to be approved by, by the Department of Commerce. So we're, we're told that that should be, it's, it's there, they've got it, um, and, and been told by tomorrow they should have their analysis done. I'm not really sure what it is that they, they just put their blessing to it and like, yeah, then all those numbers and everything makes sense. Um, but anyway, that's that's kind of a big thing. The notice was in the paper last week, I believe. Um, so everything's just kind of coming together. So city council meeting on Monday will be. Um, the plan is to have a decision from the 
city council or at least um, their, get their request and hopefully have a decision for them in order for U.S. Tower to kind of stay on track with what they uh, want to be doing. So, um, I see the new project. I see the solar. Yeah, we've been working on that on the weekends. Really it's a big have, deal. It folds it out. It's a solar panels. Okay. They're all folded in. There's four panels. Then they're going to fill? It looks like. Um, I guess I haven't. Is that outside? <coughs> it was the other day in okay. the evening, and then they were weighing one at co op. Okay. Must have been yeah, for transport. Get six of these built, I think. Maybe two of you know the numbers. I haven't heard of them. Okay. Okay. Contract for 80 or 100 of them. Really? Or maybe 200. Making them scratch their heads because yeah. it's quite, quite uh, complicated. Yeah, I'm sure. And they've been spending 14 hour days out there. It's been horrible for some of them guys. So is it solar panels, but on a mobile yeah. trailer? Yeah, so kind and of all like four of them fold forward to where you can drive down the road. Yeah. And when they had it, you know, there's one in the back, well, it's just it's two front. on the sides and one in the front. And they're having trouble engineering that. All their tires. Prior have just been for flat ground. It's got to be all on flat. Mm -hmm. Well, all four of these legs have to be able to move, move to, oh, to, to like sit on the side of the hill or get an automatic self leveling thing, you know, mm -hmm. to a certain point. They're, uh, Interesting. they're really having some engineering issues. Yeah. I mean, trying to, they'll get it figured out, but it's, it's complicated. I did see her. Let's see, one over at time I was over here, Travis was talking about it, and it seemed like, man, that's really cool. You can have this weird James thing and still have a, a tower that's perfectly <laughs> straight kind of thing. I think 200, if they can get six of them, I, I mean, and that's 200, something, something like that. It's, yeah. I think there's a seven-digit price tag on them, too. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Really? Yeah. Well, they need to hire some help. <laughs> they do, and, and Travis will tell you that. Um, so that's, uh, I guess, the next, we'll see how Monday goes, um, but that'll be a kind of a key thing uh, there. In terms of Lincoln Park Manor, um, I'm sure all of you have heard uh, now that the assisted living section is being unstaffed. Makes um, so much sense to me. I haven't figured that one out. <laughs> So I, I know that there was a lot of conversation on Monday at the County Commission meeting. Um, I'm not getting a sense that there's a, a direction there. Um, so I don't know. Um, but from what I understand with the assisted living, they have five people there living there. Um, the state inspector was requiring them to go to 24-7, having somebody in assisted living 24-7. Um, they also have a hard time with people, so with staff, so they're using a lot of agency, which is very expensive. So, the fact that they've got five people there, they have to have 24 7 staff, potentially, and I don't know if it would be an agency person or not, but it's just that's expensive too. So, I think that uh, my understanding is it just doesn't make financial sense to, to keep that open. Um, so that's that's where things are with assisted living. I, I, but like I said, with the whole the whole thing, I just don't know where where it's going or what their directions are. I haven't been in any conversation. Um, I know they had executive sessions with their attorney, um, but I don't know what they are thinking or what the plan is. If there is a plan. If they hire agency people, the wages for one person for 24 hours is about the same as the income that they're getting for them five people. Yeah. So, that seems understandable. Um, certainly not what I think any of us want here. I don't know. I'm, I'm 
waiting to help, <laughs> whatever. So that's that's all I know on, on Lincoln Park Manor. Um, if you got any questions, let me know, or if you hear anything, and, and I can pass it along. And I'm certainly um, willing to do that. Why wouldn't staff on the nursing home side suffice to staff? There's somebody at the nursing home side 24 hours, 24 7. Well, and it doesn't make no there's, sense. there's different rules for assisted living in nursing homes. And, and I don't, I'm not going to pretend to say that I know what those are, but I, but I think that they've been able to say you don't have to have somebody in assisted living 24 7 so that they're able to kind of, you know, bring staff over when they need to to help over here. But now they've got to have somebody there. 24 7. And so you, that That's means you're pulling right. somebody from over here to do that. Over here. So you're not tired of the same age. This is well, a new regulation. I'd like to see it on paper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, it makes no sense. Well, yeah. And, and the whole thing doesn't, I mean. My understanding is the five that lives there is all like a cash deal too, but that's what I said. That's hearsay. I, I, I well, yeah, I, I believe that um, it's, they all, it's all private pay. The is all private pay. There's mm -hmm. no Medicare. Yeah, correct. Cash every month. So that's where it's a little hard for me to swallow when they say it takes that staff all the way just because it's like, what is it, $30,000 a month? To live well, I think, no, that's the Tim. Huh? If they hire temporary, that's what if you're they, talking about. Yeah, I said if they have to hire that. Yeah, the I feel yeah, like you're people that yeah. come in, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's, Most of them are around 20 bucks an hour. But the, but the, the person's paying like a little over $3,000 a month to stay there, so you got five of them. And it's, I don't know, it's a more complicated, I don't know. Well, common sense is just pitched out the window on the whole thing. Why wouldn't you knock the wall out and have them connected, and then you've got it stacked? That's what I'm. Because there's no. Well, there's it's a together. way in there anyhow. There's, a there's 20 door. nurses in this side, and there's a door and 100 door feet the from that door. side. It's stacked. Knock the wall out. No, I know that's common sense. I don't mind. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying too. Yeah, it's, it's a straight yeah. shot in the, down the, down the main hall. From what I remember, I haven't been in there a long time, but you know, I think somebody's trying to make the rules up as they get off. Well, I don't feel like the state is particularly clear or helpful. I mean, I kind of feel like they, they put these... And it comes just down the line, like I said. Yeah. It's they're not just helping no, rural they're not. America. They are cutting our legs off by... We're trying to keep these open to help. Not to hurt, right? And yet, oh, you gotta. Oh, they I keep guess. raising the bar. Well, it's like, how are we raised, supposed to keep them? Raised right? back with the whatever representative you've got. Um, I'm not sure. It's what all communication has been there over the last however long. Or is it just the grace points? I don't shot. Yeah. Know it. I don't. I mean, the license is a whole deal too, though. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Any motion get involved, and it just no, it just seems to that's the sad part. I need to learn to look objectively too. But so I I don't know what to do, but I guess I'm it's in the hands of the commissioners, I guess, to figure figure it out. Um Two other just very quick things um, that I've only been very marginally involved in. Uh, the county courthouse, um, they got a grant to assess the um, exterior of the building. There's some concerns with the front steps, actually both steps, and there's water issues, and the building needs some paint, and so the idea is um, to bring in somebody to assess what those, what the problems are, what this fix is to the stairs, whether it's just it's a simple fix or if it's a whole rebuild of what those front steps are. And, and so anyway, they they got a grant um, from the Kansas Historical Society to, to hire somebody to 
kind of look at it and figure out what the recommendations are with the idea of next, um, in the fall, they can apply for a grant to actually do, do some of that work. Um, and then same with the Lincoln Carnegie Library. They received a grant um, to repair the windows in the building. And I've just been kind of with both of those. That's taken a long time to get that. Yes. <laughs> My yes. goodness. Yep. But just trying to help in terms of with those applications a little bit, reviewing them, and, and I'm sure that will have some questions by now. I didn't, I didn't no, me. usually those announcements come out a little sooner, but um, I'm, so I'm not sure what the hold up is on that. Um, in terms of upcoming schedule, um, next week I'll have, be in Hutchison for a day for any community meeting. Um, after Memorial Day, I've been thinking about taking a few days off there. I was planning to go somewhere, but that's probably not going to happen. So now I'm thinking maybe I should just be working on my building and take a few days there. Oh. To <laughs> <laughs> take a few days off to figure out what it is I'm going to be doing and, and you know, call all the people that I need to call during the day that I just don't have time to. Um, I so. mind to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those... Um, a lot of updates um, uh, where things are right now. It kind of feels like there's been some stuff kind of closing out here. We're ramping up. Um, that's what I've been working on. Any anything from your guys' perspective? Questions, projects. The Sylvan Library is basically renovated done. and basically done. I mean it's. There's some little things, that, yeah. like the decorating and what tables and chairs and yeah. stuff. But it's really nice if you get over the silver. It's just changed. You're not, not, you're not in a cave anymore. Yes. Really yeah. It's really, really nice. It looks very good. It's hard to imagine how small it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really wasn't much bigger than this room. It may be a no. little bit deeper, but basically it's this basically, room was yeah. about the size of what the library was, so. Really if they get approved in the U.S. Tower, will they help? What's the timeline look like before they break ground or do anything? They want to break ground soon. Yeah. I mean, as, as soon as the whole process lets them from in the weather. Been, yeah, in the weather. Um, <laughs> right now. Yeah, so they're kind of ready to go. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's, they wanted to be going a long time before this, but, you know, I, sometimes I feel like they, they're really good at saying this is what they want to do, but they haven't necessarily taken those steps to, to get them so they, they can do that. Um, but, uh, well, they probably don't want to set all those panels out in the hail, so I imagine they want to do them. And they're crowded. I mean, they're, from what um, Travis has said when I've been in there, they, they just have no room for anything. Does the grant include paving that street behind there, or is that on the county or the city? The city. That's is the city. It, are they talking yeah. about that? No, nobody should talk about it. But I called a guy in Solani and got back to me. I asked him to come up and look and give somebody a price estimate on a hot mix. And then I thought about the the Post Rock Community Foundation, they give Lincoln County 75000 a year. Maybe part of that could have been toward a paved street through there. And Chris Barron is going to have a cold mix deal in town this summer, which is be less money than a hot mix, but I don't have any of the figures. But he said three or four inches of that cold mix, mix would work really well on that. So that might be something that comes up for conversation in the future, but nothing in terms of, the industrial revenue bond is really just focused on their sure. expansion and no, sure. no streets or infrastructure stuff in place. I think their plan is there's three or four phases of that and they're wanting to be all done by the end of next year. Yeah, late in 2020, but 
something I saw at the one building, part of it done here by the winter time, a couple of the phases. Yeah, I've got, um, I don't know if I passed that around last time, but the presentation that they gave to the city last month in terms of their, there's four phases, That's what what's going into each phase and what jobs are associated with those phases and stuff like that. So if you want to see that, I can pass it around. I don't think we talked about it. But okay. I well, I can send that out to you if you're there. Was or is. I, was just, I was just wondering about it. If they were the way they've been pushing the city council and stuff, it seemed like they were kind of getting. Yeah, they're very just. Um, that's all I got. So. She has the short meetings on the rainy day. <laughs> Thank you.